A rivalry 30 years in the making? <laughs> More like 30 seconds. Why did I say, you know, rivalry made? Why am I starting out with this? That's the tagline for the, for the piece of shit movie called Grudge Match. Yep. Released on Christmas of 2013. It's basically a lump of coal shoved straight up your ass. It's Stallone and De Niro punching both of your balls repeatedly with ironclad fists, with brass knuckles, with spikes at the end of them. Just fucking anally fucking you up the ass and puncturing your fucking testicles. Yes, I'm talking about Grudge Match. And yes, I did not like Grudge Match. In fact, I thought Grudge Match was one of the worst films of 2013 and honestly might overtake um, my original worst of the year, which I probably don't wouldn't say Curse of Chucky. I know my friend Matt, that was his number one. I, I thought that was pretty pretty overrated and pretty shitty. But, you know, Scary Movie 5 is right up there. And um, But Grudge Match, to me, it goes pretty close to the top because of how much it just is such a failure all across the board and how it just is really it's basically a a sign of sly slipping and I love Stallone Stallone's my favorite actor and this year to let I me mean, last year 2013 was one of his worst years I'm talking close to 1983 bad I'm talking the movies that he was in bullet to the head and grudge match were equally as awful as Rhinestone and the film he directed, Staying Alive, where he's directed some gay freaking opera with 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 uh, John Travolta on stage in some you know Technicolor kaleidoscope version of Hell with costumes by Bob Fosse, Cher's costume designer, and some too so many up close shots of John Travolta's crotch you know, gyrating, that it really makes you think twice about Stallone's sexuality. I'm not kidding. Like, if you've ever seen Staying Alive, you find out he directed that, you're like, oh my god, this movie's so full of so much homoerotic fucking photography. Was Stallone experimenting with his sexuality in 83? I don't know. And what is he doing in 2013? Hmm, let's see, he's experimenting with, I don't know, his inability to give a shit. Because it seems like in this movie, he this is one of the worst alone performances I have ever seen. And I'm talking about worse than Rhinestone, worse than Stop and Mama Shoot, worse than Oscar, worse than, you know, probably worse than Party of Kitty and Studs, Italian Stallion, because what, what else was Stallone asked to do? Stallone was asked to be the hot stud guy, bang all the women. He did that role perfectly fine in the Italian Stallion. What was he asked to do in that movie Rebel, where it was like one of the first movies he did? He was supposed to play some rebel, what it from Loner. He did a good job with that. This supposed to play, you know, basically uh, out of you know a retired boxer who isn't really rocky, but Stallone doesn't sell it because he doesn't have any energy, doesn't add any energy or life to the performance. It literally looks like he's 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 at his funeral almost, it seems like. He's at his own funeral of his own movie career when he's walking around just muddling through his lines in this movie. And in a way it kinda is. I mean as soon as the Expendables movie franchise dries up and people, you know, are had enough of them which, I don't know about the third movie, I hope it doesn't suck, but his career will probably pretty much be over. And I'll have to go back to direct a video or start directing again. Because this film isn't really anything that really makes me excited for what Stallone has coming next. I mean, I, I wasn't really excited of this project in the first place. When I first heard about it, I'm like, really? You're really doing this? What is it? It looks like it sounds like another Rocky. And that's pretty much what it is. It's like Rocky Balboa, but a shitty version of Rocky Balboa. You know, my friend said it best in a comedy. He said like it's like they took like an old Rocky Balboa script and that was didn't work and they dusted it off, rewrote some things and called it a fucking day. And that's what you got. That's what Grudge Match is. And it's it's such a pain and pain in my ass to watch this movie. Literally, it's like it's so fucking boring. They'll make your ass go numb. 
and your balls, and your and your just everything. Fucking everything goes fucking numb. It's like you become fucking paralyzed for the entire running time because you're just your body you would just rather fall the fuck asleep rather than try to be invested in such a lazy fucking movie. Anyone um <sighs> can see like I really I really don't like this fucking movie um, and it's fine if you like grudge match that's cool that's fine I, I don't have a problem with that but I, I just really despise this fucking movie it was just so it was pathetic it was so pathetic it was sad after the movie is over I almost wanted to go fucking cry cry my fucking eyes out because you know, I'm like, this is this is what I've got to look forward to for Stallone movies. Is this? Is is it is this some kind of Stallone curse or something? Like every 30 years he seems to fuck up. I don't know. I mean, cause think about it. 83, like I was saying, the year of Ryan Stone staying alive. 2013. It's like it's like the fucking anniversary of Sly's worst point in his lowest point in his career, and he's trying to resurrect that again. I don't know. He's trying to see if he can beat that. I mean, I did like Escape Plan, but the only reason why I really enjoyed it a lot was for Arnold. You know, in The Return of Arnold. Sly was okay in that. He at least was invested in his character in that film. And so he was invested in Bullet to the Head. I, those movies are ten times better than Grudge Match. I mean, that's what Stallone ends the year on, is with a fucking limp dick. It's pretty much what Grudge Match is. A limp dick movie. Limp dick boxing comedy. It's equally as bad as is the worst of, of the worst when it comes to boxing comedies. Like fucking the main event with Barbara Streisand and play it to the bone. More on that fucking movie later. Rather play with my own fucking bone rather than watch that piece of shit again. It's all, and and same goes for fucking grudge match. Now the movie was directed by Peter Segal. And this guy hasn't done barely much of anything that was any good. He's a complete hack of a director. He also produced it. It has a screenplay by three fucking writers. Doug Ellen, Tim Kelleher, Rodney Rothman. You all fucking failed on the F scale. Fuck. Can't write... I mean, you can't write anything that is funny. There's nothing funny in this movie. If you find it funny, that's cool, okay? You know what? I've seen funnier things on, you know, old fucking reruns of Mad TV or Fridays that show back in the 80s that was trying to be like SNL. You know, I see funnier things when I go, you know, and wait for the fucking bus. I see funnier things than this fucking movie has to offer. Literally. I can go right, I can go take a walk down the fucking street and I'll see more things, you know, with my own two eyes for free that'll be funnier than what this film has to offer. I could probably make myself laugh more times than this movie can make me laugh. Seriously, I mean, it's got fart jokes, puke jokes, oh, old man tit jokes, oh, you know, all the whole fucking smorgasbord of shit this film has, pretty much. Cliché fucking jokes that you see in all kinds of fucking movies lately that just aren't funny, and I'm in my opinion, never were. I don't need to see a scene where Robert De Niro farts in his son's, son's face. You don't hear the sound effect, the farting sound effect, but you, you see the aftermath. Didn't need to see that. I don't need to see Stallone and De Niro, it, you know, act in an incredibly uncomfortable fucking way where neither character seems to have any chemistry whatsoever and I understand that's the point, they're rivals but they don't look comfortable together at all like it's, Stallone especially doesn't look comfortable in this movie he looks like he doesn't want to be on the set he does not look like he wants to be here he's uncomfortable trying to be a boxer who isn't rocky he doesn't pull it off he seems like he seems like he's out of his element there are moments where he's obviously sleepwalking through this film the only time he gets any life into the performance is when he's in scenes with Kim Basinger who's like one of the only things about this movie I like is Kim Basinger because she's still hot she still can act and she's a great she does a great job she's is a nice it's nice to see her again, but I would have rather seen her in a better movie than this. I mean, th th there's other actors like um, um, John Barenthal, who plays Robert De Niro's son, who's 
passable, but really what he is, his character is just a carbon copy of Mila Ventimila, uh, Rocky's son for Rocky Balboa. It's the same fucking character. They're trying to do the same fucking dynamic between Robert De Niro and his son, played by John Barenthal, and it just doesn't fucking work because it just pales in comparison to Rocky Balboa. Everything about this fucking movie pales in comparison to Rocky Balboa. It's like Stallone, if you're going to do another fucking sequel, pseudo-sequel, do Hunter. Do the movie where you play Rambo hunting down a monster in the fucking jungle. That would have been better use of your time and better use of people's fucking money than fucking shitting out Grudge Match. Anyway, you also have other cast members in this. Of course, you've heard about Kevin Hart. And I have to admit, I like Kevin Hart's stand-up. I like his earlier stand-up. His new stand-up isn't nearly as funny. He's get, He's got way too full of himself. And this is what he has to offer? This fucking performance? He plays an annoying little bitch in this movie. I wanted to bitch smack him across the screen. I wanted to pick him up and break his fucking back like Bane in Night's Nightfall. Yeah, just break his fucking back like a fucking twig. Because he's so fucking annoying in this. His character is obnoxious. You have no... He just shows up and is just annoying. That's it. He just shows up and is annoying. He doesn't add anything into the fucking film. He plays some son of some promoter or whatever who's trying to promote this new fight. Grudgement Day versus old ass De Niro versus, you know, Stallone. Who, another reason why this film doesn't work is because I don't buy for one fucking second that fat ass De Niro, excuse my French, but he's definitely a little bit overweight, that this overweight De Niro is going to take even remotely, even be able to stand in the same ring as Stallone right now. Stallone would absolutely kill De Niro in the ring. There's no believability. It's kind of hard to suspend your disbelief this much when you have De Niro and Stallone in the ring and they're like equals and I'm like, give me a fucking break. There's no fucking way. Stallone is like a fucking Greek god compared to De Niro right now. I mean, seriously, Stallone would fucking kill him. Like, Stallone could probably knock De Niro out with one hit. I mean, I don't buy this fight at the end, and also it's fucking directed as lifelessly as fucking possible, but I'll get into this more enough. I know I'm all over the fucking place. I'm all over the fucking map. Well, you know what? At least I hit some points. At least I get something. At least I, you know, at least I get my fucking licks in. This movie doesn't get land a single fucking punch. The only punch it lands is the one that you want to use to knock yourself out. Rather than sit through this fucking embarrassing fucking pile of shit. <sighs> anyway, then you, Kevin Hart, who I want to fucking deck, is in this. Like I said, his character is obnoxious for the sake of being obnoxious. If he isn't bad enough, here we have Oscar winner and an actor I respect and I've never had a problem with in any movie until this film. Alan Arkin. Alan Arkin plays the dirtiest old man I've ever seen on film. I mean, literally, he's not only a dirty old man, but he's also one of the most unlikable assholes I've ever seen. He's supposed to be kind of Mickey, I guess, to Stallone's, you know, Rocky, but he doesn't pull it off at all. He's just despicable. He's a despicable human being. His jokes don't work. He's just disgusting. He just talks on and on and on. He's worse than Kevin Hart. I want to take him. I, I, I should never want to take Alan Arkin. The guy, he, he played PV for fuck's sake in The Rocketeer. I, should, I would never hurt PV. But this guy, I would totally be fine with taking his fucking ass and twisting it, his fucking body into a motherfucking pretzel, dipping it in some fucking mustard sauce and eating it. And shitting it out my ass later. Seriously, I really wouldn't be, I, I would not be opposed to doing that. That's how fucking horrible this character is. It's so fucking aggravating. Even Stallone in one scene tells him to shut up. That's like one of the few times I actually kind of got a chuckle. Because it's like, it, it, it seems like Stallone was actually getting annoyed with Alan Arkin's fucking shtick. I mean, you want to know how bad Alan Arkin is in this movie? You have a serious scene between Kim Basinger and Stallone, and they're talking to each other in a nice moment. And in the background, you have Alan Arkin fucking air humping, ah, ah, sticking his fucking tongue out like he's fucking Miley Cyrus. Yeah, like he's Miley Cyrus. You know what? 
I want to take a fucking wrecking ball and knock his ass into the fucking stratosphere. Ugh. I also want to take a wrecking ball and knock this fucking movie out of fucking existence, shattered into a million fucking pieces, and then piss on every single one of them. So now that I got, I got the initial, you know, rage, I got the initial, you know, beast out of my basement, so to speak. Let's get into the, you know, the fucking plot here, which is fucking generic and shitty and, and awful. Okay, the movie even, okay, the movie even opens up, like, really awkward. And that's, like, one of the main things I got from this movie, awkward. Salone's performance awkward as hell. Like I said, he d looks like he doesn't want to be here. He looks uncomfortable. Like, like he, d he doesn't belong. It just doesn't work. I mean, is it because he's dealing, still dealing with the tragedy of his loss of his son, if that's the case, Sly? Take a break. Retire for a little bit. Recharge your batteries. Mourn your son some more. Don't star in pieces of shit like this would that stain your fucking career. I don't even know why he did this movie. Like, I mean, I would think he would have self-respect enough to not do a movie where he basically makes fun of Rocky. I mean, he did so much to try to defend himself, you know, from all these jokes he's been getting from people. Like, he got for Rocky when it came, Rocky Balboa when it came out, and Rambo when it came out for being too old to do this. And now he's in this fucking movie where he's basically starring in as a character who's getting ridiculed for being too fucking old. He's getting, you know, called, he's getting all kinds of old man jokes and shit. Fucking fighting in a match that's sponsored by fucking Geritol. I mean, seriously, it's like, what happened? Like, you were like gung-ho about, you know, I'm, you know, I'm old, you know, I'm not, I may be old, but I can still do it. And here you are, like, being okay. You're fine with starring in a fucking movie where you're basically just shitting on the good name of Rocky. That's pretty much it. With the scene where you go into the fucking, you know, you go into the, the meat locker or whatever, and you punch the meat, and then Alan Arkin's like, Why? Hey, what are you doing? I'm gonna punch the meat. You're like, what? What is this? You're gonna punch the meat? You know, we don't have time for this. We're going to dinner, you know? And I'm like, dinner? This screenplay had, took three fucking writers to write a joke that not only elicits zero laughs, but makes no fucking sense. Okay? First off, why the fuck was Razor going to fucking freezer and punch some fucking meat? Why? Why the fuck would he do that? There's no fucking reasoning behind it. It doesn't make any fucking sense. And second, if you're going to dinner, I don't think you go in through the fucking freezer and go past the fucking meat, the racks of fucking meat. I don't think you go past the freezer department if you're going to eat dinner at a restaurant. What? Is Alan Arkin and Stallone going to take home a fucking rack of beef? Is that what the joke? That they're just going to grab a rack of beef with them and take it home and then cook it later? Is that why they're in the fucking freezer? No. The reason why is because they want to make a fucking easy Rocky joke that isn't funny and doesn't work. And people saw coming a mile away and it, it just it does not fucking work. And then you also have, oh, oh, drink eggs. Oh, oh that's disgusting. Oh, of course, yeah, that's a very easy joke. This, you know... Could you try it a little bit harder? That's the problem. This movie is a lazy fuck. You know, it's a lazy ass. Anyway, so you had that bullshit joke. You also have, of course, the jokes and stuff with the training, where Stallone's trying to train and Alan Arkin's giving him shit. Tries to make him slip on a fucking banana peel, for fuck's sake. And then there's even a scene where he, Stallone's trying to drag a truck behind him. He loses control. The truck almost hits Sly and knocks him into a ditch. And here you have Alan Orkin. Ha! Ha! Oh my. And he's like sitting in a wheelchair. And I literally want to take his wheelchair, grab him and his fucking wheelchair, and throw him off a fucking cliff! Ah! God, I hate this movie. I hate this movie so freaking much. I just want to freaking physically just have a grudge match right in my face right now. I'll just beat the freaking shit out of it. Just, come on. Come on, come on, come on. Damn it. Come on.
gonna do it. I'm gonna hit me, you motherfucker. Mm -hmm. <sighs> okay. Focused. All right. Let's go here with the rest of the fucking plot. Okay, it starts out, like I said, awkward. You have, you know, shitty CGI scene of Stallone and De Niro, I guess, fighting in their prime with some fucking montage, which is, once again, a really lazy way to start your movie. You have no backstory with these characters. You just start off with, like, some ESPN Sports Center type montage scene of their history as fighters. Yep. Go buy their history, you know, storied history in like five minutes. You know, because we got to do it for the ADD generation who can't pay attention for five seconds without having shit flash on screen. They can't sit through a movie where, you know, it might take 30, 45 minutes, maybe to build up the fucking, you know, backstory. No, we got to have five minutes of, you know, randomness to get the audience involved, but really all it does is turn people like me off, because I want to actually have a little bit of a backstory for these characters, and actually give a shit about what happens. I'm not saying that a whole dinner generation today is like that, but there are a select few that most definitely are. So anyway, Pittsburgh boxers Henry Rager Sharp, played by Sylvester Stallone, Billy the Kid McDonough, played by Robert De Niro, they become rivals after two fights, one of which Kid beats Razor, and one of which one of which Razor beats Kid. And in both of these flashback scenes, you have shitty CGI, like I was mentioned earlier, with Stallone, young Stallone, and young De Niro's faces on, like, regular body, rock, leg, I don't know, regular bodies? I don't know what the fuck is going on. It just looks weird. And creepy. Kind of like, you know, the young Jeff Bridges' face in Tron Legacy. CGI is not advanced enough to the point where you can get away with that. Why the hell do they do that? Why don't they just cast young actors who kind of look like Stallone and De Niro instead of fucking doing that shit? It's just disturbing looking. Anyway, before they have a rematch, Razor announces retirement. I announced my retirement from boxing. Which reminds you of like Rocky 3, right? Oh, he's retiring from boxing or Rocky 5. This movie makes Rocky 5 feel like a masterpiece. I'd rather watch that. As, as, as you know, uncomfortable as Stallone's performance in that film is, because it acts like he's brain damaged, Stallone actually has passion in some scenes. Nothing. There's no passion. There's no guts. There's no glory in this movie. There's nothing. So anyway, years later, you know, because Razor announcing retirement, before the rematch, it ruins both of their careers for some reason. Yeah, because one boxer retired before some rematch means the other boxer's career is ruined now for some reason. I don't understand that. It doesn't make any fucking sense. You know, if you're a good boxer, you can continue to get fucking fights after the fact. If that was, if that was, if it really was the case that if somebody retires before you get a chance to fight them again, um, then there'd be so many boxers whose careers would be ruined. Yeah, that makes a hell of a lot of sense. Uh, well, what else do we expect for when you have three fucking monkeys writing the script? Three monkeys. Yeah, I called them monkeys because it's exactly what they are. Fucking monkeys. Typing on the fucking keyboard. Throwing their shit around. Anyway. <laughs> years later, Razor is working on a shipyard when he's visited by promoter Dante Slate Jr. played by Kevin Hart. Who wants Razor to promote a motion capture performance for a video game. Yeah, I want them to provide a motion capture performance for some video game that I get. And then, you know, what happens is Razor begrudgingly accepts the $15,000 needed to renovate his house. And you have fucking uncomfortable ass scenes where Stallone is trying the best he can not to deck Kevin Hart. And they have, and then dealing with shit where Stallone's an artist, created some wire sculpture, which I guess is supposed to be a dog, but doesn't look like any dog I've ever seen. And Kevin Hart's like, what is that? Like, a cat? Oh, that's cool. He's like, no, it's a dog. And you're like, oh my god, you're just face palming because you're like, is this this film's attempt at humor? Is this it? I was alone talk about what his fucking metal sculpture art really is? Why don't you take that metal sculpture art and just fucking stab me in the fucking neck while you're at it? I'm just, I feel the same way regardless while sitting through this shit. Every fucking minute of this movie feels like five minutes combined, maybe times ten. I don't. This movie's fucking up my head. I can't even put calculations correct to explain this how boring this fucking movie is. 
so fucking slow and tedious. Makes you want to take a bullet to the fucking head. Anyway. I'm just a fucking bullshit, uncomfortable ass, unfunny scenes with Stallone and, Stallone and Kevin Hart. And then he grudgingly accepts that Stallone goes to the rec record recording studio. He gets surprised by kids. He's like, hey! And I was like, oh, I told you, he wouldn't, he wouldn't. I thought you told me he wouldn't be here. Hey, look, you know, you've been ducking me for so long. Hey, fun time, you know. And Robert De Niro, he's not awful, but, you know, he, he he can do a better job. He can be in better fucking movies. I mean, fuck, it's Robert De Niro. This is just sad and embarrassing and pathetic that Stallone and De Niro, who were, like, two of the big, big stars in their, in their prime, are stuck doing shit like this. It's just sad. You have motherfuckers like Kellen Lutz getting multiple roles. Can't act for shit. Looks like a fucking underwear model. Yeah, he's going to get more roles. And he's going to get, you know, roles where he can, you know, branch out or some shit. Same thing goes for Channing Tatum. I like Channing Tatum. I'm starting to kind of warm up on him. But he is nowhere near the acting chops that Robert De Niro is. Robert De Niro has won a fucking Oscar. You know, seeing De Niro and Pacino and embarrassing shit, like Pacino and fucking Jack and Jill having the hots for Adam Sandler and drag, seeing Robert De Niro in this fucking thing where he's farting in people's faces, getting, you know, you know, making old man tit jokes, and then seeing shit like, and seeing Stallone and fucking embarrassing shit like this, making fun of Rocky, is just sad. It's sad and fucking pathetic. You know, it's I'll make I'm gonna make up a new word to describe this movie. It's pathetic. It's fucking pathetic. It's fucking and pathetic in one fucking word. It's pathetic. Grudge Match is a pathetic movie. And we're going back into this stupid fucking. You've seen it in the trailer where they are in these god awful looking green screen suits and they knock each other out and they get in some sort of sprawl and Kevin Hart has some stupid joke like, hey hey you're old man and old men don't fight old men don't fight is it just like the shitty joke you had in Ride Along trailer where like you're white you're white you don't fight I'm like what white people don't fight what the hell and because you're old you don't fight I guess Kevin Hart and the writers of this movie have never seen grumpy old men this seems like they're trying to do Grumpy Old Men, but failing miserably. Grumpy Old Men and Grumpy Old Men are two excellent comedies compared to this shit. And I actually like those movies, so I'm not trying to bash those movies. Because those are actually good fucking comedies with old men. Not like this fucking movie. So shitty makes me want to throw up. Anyway, this fucking footage of this fight between Razor and Kid goes viral. And it gets uploaded on YouTube, and it's like huge and big, and people do all kinds of shit with it, and make animated CGI things with like Rocky, you know, like Razor, sorry, Razor, not Rocky. Might as well be fucking Rocky. So it's trying to be, smashes a safe on top of Robert De Niro, ah, ha, 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 ha. and it's like a big hit on the internet for some reason. I guarantee this would not be a fucking big hit on the internet. You, I don't buy that at all. I don't buy it at all that some fight with some old men it, dressed in stupid ass looking green screen suits is really old men that and boxing for one yeah boxing is not very popular it hasn't been for a long fucking time this is not gonna go viral this is not gonna be superly popular and extremely successful enough to even get a grudge match that's because these fucking writers don't know what the fuck they're doing. They're thinking with the brain in their ass, I guess. I don't know. They must have their brain located in their ass or in between their balls and their gooch. I don't know what the where the fuck it is. But it obviously is not working properly. If you're thinking that oh, that's going to go viral. Or you're thinking this is a good idea. This is a stupid idea for a movie. Anyway, this is really popular. So then Slate gets the idea of having a fight between Razor and Kid, the final match, and calling it, he calls it a grudge match. Kid accepts Slate's offer, and Razor is forced to do it as, as well. After warning he's been fired from the shipyard, the press conference to announce the grudge match, Razor is approached by his ex-girlfriend Sally Rose, played by Kim Basinger, who cheated on him with Kid during their youth and ended up becoming pregnant. Now widowed, Sally wants to reconnect with Razor, but he's reluctant. Razor later re recruits his old trainer, Louis Lighton Conlon, played by Alan Larkin, 
fucking asshole, old man, dickhead. To get him back into shape, while well, Kid is approached by his restrained biological, restrained biological son, BJ, John Barenthal, against Sally's wishes. They're initially dismissing him, the two begin to bond after BJ gives Kid helpful advice regarding his technique and is invited to be his trainer. Of course, you get all this, you know, guess what kind of jokes you get with BJ? Oh, blowjob jokes! Yes, blowjob jokes! This movie's so fucking hilarious with blowjob jokes. God! His name is BJ, so it means blowjob. Where are these writers? Are these writers fucking 12, 12 year kids? Like, who fucking does that anymore? Except, I mean, that's, that's, that's straight. Like I said, everything about this fucking movie is lazy. So lazy, it's killing my brain cells. Just thinking about this movie is literally. It, it's it's like I'm getting a concussion. It's like somebody's, you know, it's like little tiny fucking fists with boxing gloves are punching every single fucking one of my brain cells and pummeling them into fucking oblivion. Just making me fucking knocking my ass silly. So anyway, to have this bonding moment between father and son, which doesn't fucking work because you have shit and comedy scenes that don't fucking work at all. Of course, there's other comedy scenes that try to do, like this horrible, fucking embarrassing ass, like, pseudo, like, commercial, like it's a commercial with Stallone and De Niro promoting some Las Vegas fucking buffet or some shit, and it is horrible. It's like they're trying to be like Rocky II when Stallone, when Rocky's like promoting that cologne or some shit, but it's like it ten times worse. I remember going to some buffet and he's all like, oh, hey, you know, go to Vegas for the cafe, you know, for nice, good food at the buffet. And Robin was like, yeah, it's a good place. And I'm like, oh, God, kill me now. Just, just grab the fucking gun, put it in my fucking mouth, pull the motherfucking trigger. Please, it would be more, it would be painless compared to this shit. Watching my idol, watching my favorite actor fucking embarrass himself alongside another one of the greatest actors of all time is just too fucking much. Why? Why does this movie exist? Just to torture people like me? God. Uh. I mean, Stallone and De Niro worked well in Copland. And to quote that movie, Stallone and Nero get back together for possibly, uh, maybe, might be, possibly a good movie, you know, Raging Bull and Rocky in the same movie. But you know what? They had their chance and they blew it! Anyway, after that uncomfortable ass fucking, you know, commercial, we have to see it. I mean, I can't even describe how truly awful it is to watch that shit. You have to see it to believe it. To really feel the pain, you have to see that. And then you have a scene where Stallone and Nero try to promote the fight at a UFC fight. Some new UFC guy starts giving them shit. De Niro starts telling, yelling, t talking on the mic, saying that you know UFC is like wrestling. You have this guy come up and he's like, UFC is not wrestling. And then a scene that could actually be funny is fucking ruined with shitty editing and shitty directing. Because you have because basically, the UFC guy starts giving Stallone and De Niro some shit, calling him old man and all kinds of shit like that, and he gets his ass knocked out. The UFC guy, by Stallone. But you know what? You never see the punch connect with the guy's face. That's textbook. That's like textbook 101. The the movie was being extremely lazy with its jokes and with its premise. But it couldn't even do one of couldn't even do one really simple joke right. That's how fucking pathetic this movie is. It can't even get do that joke right. Didn't even show the punch connect with the fucking guy's face. That's why I like to land, I like to connect a punch with Peter Segal's jaw. You know, just knock him right the fuck out. And I love Sly and De Niro, but man. <laughs> this movie's bad enough that, you know, <laughs> bring it on, come on, <laughs> take them both out. God. So anyway, um, after that fucking bit shit, what happens is you hit this stupid drama where I guess what happens is 
you know, Razor reunites with Sally, um, Razor, whatever, you know, Lightning Kid, whatever, the McKid, whatever, McKids, fucking McDonald's, man, uh, you know, De Niro looks like he's been eating too much cheeseburgers anyway, so it makes sense. He ends up finding out Razor is blind in one eye, he tries to convince Razor not to fight, well, that's actually Lightning, his, his fucking stupid ass, uh, Lightning Conlin, or Colin, Colin Blow, Alan Arkin, Vince, you know, tells Razor not to fight because, you know, he's blind in one eye. Completely blind him. Razor refuses to back down. Kid takes his grandson. Kid takes his grandson, Trey. And this kid, I fucking wanted, I hated this kid. I wanted to take his fucking body, his little tiny right body, put it on a place kick, and kick his ass to fucking Afghanistan. <laughs> Seriously, kick his ass all the way to fucking Alaska, Afghanistan, wherever, all around the fucking world. Make his little butt bounce off every motherfucking continent, then fall in the fucking ocean and get eaten by a fucking shark. I hated this kid. Obnoxious, annoying. Oh god, he was so irritating. Made the kid and Dick Tracy look like a fucking wonderful person to be with. He was hungry. That's fine. This kid was just horrible. It's the type of kid actor I hate the most. Kid actor who's just there to be cute and not act like a normal kid. Just be a fucking annoying little runt. Just wanna, mm. You know, do the same thing that Hancock did to that kid who was talking shit to him in the, in the movie. You know, BAM! Yes, this movie made, this movie it was so shitty that literally it made me think about actually, you know, letting, you know, child violence and old man violence be okay for the time being. Because, you know, this movie pissed me off that much that I'm willing to let that shit slide. I'm willing to let my morals slide just so I can kick the fucking kid to fucking outer space. Take Alan Arkin, rip his head off, bounce it like a fucking basketball, slam it in the fucking hoop, then take his fucking body and smash it with my fucking feet, kick it into the fucking crowd, take his wheelchair, and throw it on a fucking incinerator. Do the same thing with this fucking movie. Take it and screaming and put it into a fucking wood chipper. <sighs> anyway. This all leads to this drama. Trey, you know, ends up getting taken to a bar by Robert De Niro because he's a bad guy. And the kid gets out of the bar and because De Niro goes in and tries to do something. And the kid goes in and gets in his car and almost gets in an accident. So this breaks up. This is this great strife between Robert De Niro and his son, which is bullshit. Stupid fucking writing. Another example of stupid writing. What kind of fucking kid, what kid is going to go into a car and try and drive it? The first chance he gets when he's alone. Yeah, he's left alone. He's going to grab some fucking beers. He's going to get in them. Excuse me. It gives me fucking indigestion. It's that fucking shitty. See, even my my body is like wanting to literally expel this movie's shit. It's like, stop talking about this movie. Seriously, stop it. It's bad for your health. And so, anyway, my body's giving me signals and I'm not fucking listening to them. I should. So, anyway, kid... He ends up like, what kind of kid's gonna do? Buy, fucking bring some beers, get in the fucking car, and drive it. This fucking stupid shit. It's like this whole movie, stupid shit that I wanna fucking punch in the face. Anyway, the grudge match finally arrives, and it's fucking bullshit. It's a shitty grudge match. Oh, I'm sorry, it didn't go any further on the fucking strife, the bullshit between Robert De Niro's son and him. Oh, 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 she had a fucking tear for nothing. So anyway. Get to the final fight, and it's shitty, it's lackluster, point to the bone did it better, even with its hallucinations and bullshit. At least that kept me involved, at least I got to see some titties in that, man, I didn't get to see anything. No titties, no nothing, a shitty fight, which is lackluster, which ends in the fucking cheesiest, corniest looking fucking ending I've ever seen, where Rock, you know, I'm sorry, I keep saying Rocky, fuck me, I'm not the only one. That's what the movie's trying to do. Anyway, so Stallone punches De Niro, gets on one knee, and he's like, Oh, you're going you know, to keep fighting. You want to keep fighting? All right, yeah, lift each other up. 
And then De Niro hits Stallone, knocks him down. You want to keep fighting? Okay, all right. And, and the announcer's like, this is amazing. This is the most greatest thing I've ever seen. And I'm like, oh my God, no, it's not. It's fucking corny. So motherfucking corny. <sighs> corn on the cob is nowhere near as corny as the ending of this movie. Anyway, it ends, and then I, I'm, I, I guess there was some end credit scene that I did not fucking see. I didn't watch it. I don't need to see it. Some shit about Slate, fucking Kevin Hart, and, and fucking Alan Arkin, and Razor, and, you uh, know, watching some Dancing with Stars thing, and they want to get a drudge match between Mike Tyson and Evander Hol Holyfield. Which, to be honest, I'd never see that fucking movie. That would actually be a grudge match that would be worth fucking watching. And would be believable that those two could actually get in the ring and actually fight again. Not the case with this movie. Oh yeah, I forgot also Alan Arkin after Stallone and De Niro get their money or whatever. Alan Arkin's like, now you can get a TV. And that's the whole thing. They bought a TV. So, you know, Alan Arkin can watch his fucking Dancing with the Stars. You know what? I want to take that fucking TV and just smash it over every single motherfucker who was responsible for this fucking travesty. Just every single one of them. Just TV, TV, smash. Hey, you're on TV. Just T, 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 T. All down the road like motherfucking dominoes and just fall down and just... Oh, God. Anyway, yeah, that's Grudge Match. It's a fucking grudge match. I hated this fucking movie. I am pissed. It's all could be as you can see. I hate this hated this fucking movie. Fuck grudge match. I really don't know what else to say, except Man, Salone. Get it together, man. Get it fucking together. Shit. This is worse. This is the worst alone movie. I'm gonna say it right now, the worst alone movie I've ever seen, because he has no energy. He doesn't give a shit in this movie. And the other comedy, Stop Our Mama Shoot, Ryan Stone, and, you know, Oscar, he gave at least a shit. And had some energy. Maybe not the best type of energy, but I can, and also I could kind of actually laugh at some things in those movies. Nothing in this movie was funny. Nothing. Not a single goddamn thing. It was just tragic and pathetic. So yeah, fuck this motherfucking pathetic piece of fucking dog shit movie called Grudge Match, and I really don't know what to say. So what a rate out of five stars? <laughs> a half a star. For just for Kim Basinger. That's it. A half a fucking star. Because everything else is worthless. Deserves to be thrown out with the motherfucking trash.